Hey everyone, April here. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things Power Platform and Microsoft 365. Several months ago, I released a Power Apps template for handling desk reservations. And I've been blown away by the amount of people using that template. I've received so many amazing messages from you all letting me know that you're using that template for desk reservations and even other purposes like parking lot spaces and meeting room reservations. I love hearing about the different ways that you're using the template, so definitely keep those messages coming. Now, of course, with more of you using the template, I've received some good feedback on ways that I can improve it. So I've been hard at work behind the scenes working on a version three of the template with some of your suggestions added. I'll walk you through what I've added and how I implemented some of these features coming up right after this. All right, let's start with what I've fixed and what I've added. I have a hidden screen on this template that will show our release notes. Let's tackle the bug fixes in optimization section first. One big issue that isn't listed here is the flow that went along with the original template that would provision the underlying SharePoint list. There seems to be some weird quirks and bugs with using that in different environments that I wasn't aware of when I chose that method. So going forward for this version of the template, I've chosen to just document how you would need to set up the SharePoint list rather than have you run the flow to set those up for you. This I hope should avoid any of those issues related to that flow in getting the SharePoint list provisioned. Some other optimizations and bug fixes to the template itself. One was revolves around dates sticking in the application and selection sticking. Now that's simply because no one is perfect and I forgot to put in some clearing mechanisms after you confirm and book a reservation to cancel out those variables and those selections in the application. So I've went through and I've added those in so that those values won't be left over once you submit a reservation. So to show you how I did that really quick, if we go to the confirm screen, that's where you confirm the reservation and the process is complete. On the confirm button, if we look at its on select property, so at the very top, that's where we're writing the data to the database of the reservation that we made. And you see below that I'm doing some reset functions. Those allow us to reset the values selected within any of the input controls that we have in our power up. So I'm doing that on our drop downs. And then you'll notice I'm clearing out some collections using the clear function. So that those are blank and empty again. And then finally, I'm going to reset some of the global variables I'm using by using the set function and just setting the value to blank. In all of these actions, I have wrapped in a function called concurrent so that they can run in parallel and that can help optimize performance. The other optimization I did was with the time zone dropdowns. And that's here on our date selection screen. When I originally created this template, that was before a brand new function was released called the sequence function. So I've optimized these time dropdowns to use the new sequence function so that it can automatically generate the time increments that we want. So if we take a look at the time dropdown here and go to its items property, you can see the optimizations that I made. I'm using the function called width, and then I'm going to define an interval at which I want to have my different time periods. So if you needed to change this for any reason, you could change this interval, say instead of 15 minute intervals to 30 minute intervals. And that would update the formula. So we're gonna say, take this in 15 minute intervals and generate a sequence of time values for those intervals. This makes us way more optimized and easy to update. So this isn't all hard coded like it was in the original template. And finally, the last big bug fix was all around time zones. Can I just say I hate time zones in general, dealing with daylight savings time and just different time zones, and then especially when it comes to application development. They always cause headaches. So we've run into some interesting problems with time zones here on this template, specifically because we're using SharePoint. So in the template, I was using originally date time fields in the SharePoint list. The problem with that is those date time fields use whatever region settings you have configured in your SharePoint site. So if we go to the SharePoint site that we're using to store this data and click on the gear in the upper right hand corner and go to site information and view all site settings, under site administration, if you have the right access, you should see this regional settings option. And you'll see at the very top here, we define what time zone all the time values for this SharePoint site should be in. So some of the issues that you all are running into where you would put a reservation in, say for 
10 o'clock to 11 o'clock your time and that would submit to the database and you go look at the data here in the SharePoint list to notice that the time was off versus what you actually selected in the app. That's because of a difference between the time settings that SharePoint uses and the time that the Power App uses, which is your local time. So in my case right now, I'm on Central Standard Time, and that's when I run the Power App, the time that it would be basing on. However, in the SharePoint site that I'm using, you'll notice I have the time zone set to Pacific Time. So if I were to select 10 to 11 in the application in the Power App, when it actually gets written into the SharePoint list, that's going to show us actually from 8 to 9. So how I chose to get around these potential time zone issues, rather than having to try to do all this crazy formatting date and time, I decided to do a little workaround. So you'll notice I have four additional fields in my SharePoint list now. I have checkout from text, checkout to text, and then checkout from number and checkout to number. So when you create a reservation in the application, it's going to write that date and time you selected into all these four fields as text values and then also as number values. And there's a method to this madness. This is gonna help us get around all of these weird time zone issues. I can take these different formats and use those in my application, not only to help with time zone issues, but maybe even some delegation issues. So to see where this is actually used, if we go back into the app and take this dashboard screen, for example, here we're going to return the top two reservations that I have coming up. So this needs to query that desk reservations list. I made an optimization here to use that checkout from number field to do the filter. So first part of the filter, show the items for the current user. Second part is we're going to take that checkout from number, and then we're only going to return items greater than or equal to today. And you see to make sure that the type of data matches up, I'm using the value function to transform the today object that gets the current date into a number so that that will match up correctly. So we're going to take the today function, format it specifically in the format, the four year digit, the two days digit, and the two month digit and I'll put that into a number using the value function so that we can properly compare that with the same data type. So that right there will get around those inconsistencies in the time. So we had the one issue where if you submit it, the time is wrong, but then the other issue was since the time is wrong in the SharePoint list, when you go to pull that data and see it again in the Power App, that formula here, this filter wasn't working. Now that I've created that number field, that's going to get around any of those issues. So hopefully that makes sense, that optimization there. Now let's talk about the fun part and some new features. First up, in that calendar screen, a lot of you want to know how can we restrict it so someone can't select a date in the past. And alternatively, a lot of you asked, well, how can I restrict that calendar so that someone can only make a reservation, say, one month ahead of time? They can't make a reservation for a year from now. So I've made some optimizations to that calendar component, which is what we use in the app for that, to handle this. So let's take a look at what I did here. So for this, I'm going to go to my component section because all of this work is done right here in this calendar component. If we look at the calendar components properties, we have several custom properties here. You'll notice I added one new custom property called days ahead restriction. And this is a number property. So what you'll do here, if you want to restrict the number of days ahead of time that someone can book a reservation, you would put that number of days in this custom property here. Right now I have it blank, so it's not going to have any restrictions at all. But if I wanted to say restrict it to only two weeks in the future, I could put 14 in there. Or maybe a month in the future, I could put a 30 in there. Now how the calendar component is actually going to take that data and restrict it, if we look here in the tree view, the gallery calendar is where we would select those dates. And if we expand that out, you see we have a button called button day value. This is where we can actually select a date from the calendar. So if we select that and click on the properties panel here and go to display mode, this is where we can set the display mode of an object, meaning is this clickable, is it disabled or what? So what I did is I've leveraged this display mode property of this button within the calendar component in this gallery to be able to restrict whether you can select a date in the past or up to X number of days in the future. So I'm doing a little bit of a complicated if statement here to be able to determine if this date is in the past or in that date restriction future window that we outlined. 
But essentially all I'm saying here is if the date that they have selected is less than today, or the date that's selected is greater than, and here's that new custom property we added, the calendar days ahead restriction days, then I want the display mode of this to be disabled so they cannot click that button to select the date. Otherwise, I want the display mode to be edit so that it is clickable and they can select that date. So how does this look when we're actually using the application? So let's run the app like we're wanting to book a new reservation. So I'm gonna click on the book tab and you see what I'm recording this is actually May 30th and I cannot select a date in the past. So that is just included in the template automatically now. You don't have to do anything to restrict that. Now, if we look and we move ahead to June, you see I can book anything within the June timeframe, but then you see if I fast forward to July, I can only book up to July 28th. So if we look at this calendar component that I have on my screen, you'll notice in my days ahead restriction property, I have the number 60. So that's two full months, 60 days ahead of time that someone can book a reservation. So hopefully this new feature will help a lot of you out there. The other new thing I added is the ability to manage the desk. In the original template, if you wanted to manage the desk, you had to go to the SharePoint list and do all of that in there. So I've added the ability natively within this template now to be able to activate, deactivate a desk, delete a desk, and all of that. So if we play the template now, you'll see a new tab at the bottom called Manage Desk. And I think with version two of the desk, I added this concept of being able to activate or deactivate a desk. That could be maybe if something is wrong with the desk, like it's broke or a chair is broke or it needs to be cleaned. And you wanna temporarily deactivate that so no one can book it. So I use that concept and we can see all of the desks that we have based off of an active or inactive status and how many are in that status. I added in this panel so we could easily delete a desk if we need to. So say desk six isn't there anymore. We restructure to move things around. I can delete it, confirm the deletion, and then it's gone. I added another quick button to deactivate one. So you still want to keep that desk there in your list, but just not let anyone book it. So all you have to do is click the deactivate button that switches the status out and moves that to the inactive tab. And then of course we have the ability to add new and to edit desk. So if we click on the edit button for desk one, if you need to change any of the information, like what floor it's on, the link to the map that you would see where the desk is located or the description, you can edit that all here on the screen, update it so that that will be shown and updated in the app. And same thing here with the plus, we can add in a new desk easily with this new included screen. Another addition is the view reservation screen. In the initial version of an app, you make a reservation and in the app itself, this was about all you could see. You could see when you reserved it, what desk and what time. I've added this new button you notice here on the dashboard that will take you to a new screen where you can see additional information about the desk that you reserved. The name, the floor, when you reserved it, the dates you reserved it from and to, the description, and then this icon here will take you to that map. So in case you need to remind yourself where the desk is that you reserved, you can easily get to that information. Now, another feature that you all have requested that I didn't include in this template for a reason is the ability to have a QR code associated with the reservation so that you could scan that when you get to the location to go and access your desk. The reason I didn't include that is there's not a good way out of the box within Canvas apps to have that QR code right now. But there are some workarounds that I did want to mention for those of you wanting to add in QR codes. One approach is to do this programmatically with an Azure function. Someone from the community here, as you see, created this great template application with the Canvas app that does call an Azure function, which will generate a QR code for you that you can then use in your application. So if this is something that interests you, you can download his sample file here and get that running. But this will get you into premium licensing territory to be able to utilize this, as well as having to have access to Azure and those costs associated with the Azure function. But it is a good approach. Another approach is to leverage Power Automate in the Encodian connector. The Encodian connector actually has an action that lets you create a QR code. So what you could do is call the flow after you confirm the desk reservation, have it run the Encodian connector's create QR code action, and then save that data back to your SharePoint list so that you can then surface that up into the application. Now, of course, with the Encodian connector, there are some costs involved potentially as well. They do have a free trial and a free tier that's restricted to 50 actions a month. So depending on how heavily used your desk reservation template here is, 
this might be a good option. And some other small things that I didn't bother to put in the release notes, on the dashboard screen here and on the My Appointment screen, in the old version, if you selected a desk reservation for a range of dates, it only showed the first date that you had the reservation. So I've added the feature to show you the whole range of the dates that you've selected for the reservation. And also something that wasn't in the previous version, in the upcoming and the previous reservations tab here on the My Appointments section, I did add an associated number so you can easily see how many upcoming reservations you have. Another simple thing that I added here was the cancel button. In the old version, you click it and it cancels the reservation. In the new version, you click cancel and it does have a confirmation dialog box pop up just so you can make sure people don't accidentally hit that button and cancel something when they don't really mean to. This creates one more layer where they have to go and click confirm to actually cancel the reservation. Another question that I did get that I wanted to bring up was involving this cancellation process. As you can see by looking at the cancel buttons on select, I'm removing that item completely from the desk reservation list. Some of you asked, how can we keep that item there and just change the status from active to cancel because you wanted to keep a history of all reservations. That'd be very simple to solve if you did want to add that in yourself. The way I would recommend doing that is on your desk reservations list, adding in a new number column and naming that active and use zero for inactive and one for active. And the only tweaks you need to make in the app for this is on the confirm screen and on the on select of the confirm button, add in a property here for that active field and set that value to one when you confirm. And then when you confirm cancel, instead of removing, do a patch back to that data source. And the only thing you'll change is toggling that active value there to zero. And lastly, you wouldn't want those canceled reservations showing up on your dashboard or my appointment screen. So you will need to tweak the filters here and add an additional filter for where active equals one. All right, so that's really all that I wanted to go over for the updates to the app. If you would like me to go into any of these concepts in more depth, I can do shorter focused videos on that. And of course, as you use this, let me know how you like these new features and if there's anything else that you notice that needs to be tweaked, any bugs or any new features that you think would be really helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.